Hello everybody. This video is part of the Archery Journeys uh, project that I started and uh, in this video I'd like to talk about um, how to put on a first-rate 3D shoot for traditional equipment. Um, there's a lot of competition out there. There's a lot of a lot of clubs and organizations uh, running 3D shoots. So how do you separate your shoot from others, and how do you up the up the level of your shoot and gain a reputation for putting on a good good shoot? Uh, well, the first thing, in my opinion, you, that that you need to do is know your customers, know your guests, uh, um, and I don't mean personally know them, but know their know their equipment, know their uh, their distances, uh, and understand that. And, and uh, don't set up a course uh, for a high-end compound shooter and then expect someone shooting uh, uh, traditional equipment or a primitive self bow or whatever uh, to like the same course. The distances and and uh, other factors are not uh, suitable for their equipment for most of the shooters. So so know your, your, your shooters, know your guests, know that equipment. It helps if you shoot that type of equipment yourself. And uh, keep in mind that not everybody is at this level. There are people coming that are at this level or that level. So kind of mix it up. Uh, you may want to have some easier shots so the guys that are at this level aren't getting discouraged. Uh, and you may want to have some, some harder shots so the guys that are at this level aren't getting bored. Um, sounds easy. But in reality, it's not, and a lot of places make the mistake of not setting up their courses. It should be a given, but I'm going to mention it anyways, that your, your courses should be well marked and safe. Um, so when you're laying out that course, keep in mind that there's going to be multiple people out there on your course shooting arrows. Some may miss, so they might be looking for arrows behind a target or whatever. So keep that in mind. Uh, I would suggest that after you lay out a course and set it up, that you have a different set of eyes, a different person come through, check that course, or maybe multiple people come through, check that course for safety. So um, that goes without saying. I mean... Nobody wants to shoot a course that when setting up your course, keep keep in mind um, the type of target, uh, and by that I mean the the animal that that target represents and that animal's habitat. And you want to set that target up in a similar habitat so it looks realistic. Now, uh, for guys that are hunters, that's relatively easy to do. Um, I mean. You don't want to put a pronghorn antelope <laughs> in in some some uh, heavy uh, hemlocks if it can be avoided uh, and uh, such. You, you may want to add little extras to your to your shoot or your your um, shot, I should say, uh, scenario. Uh, if you got a turkey target out there, why not have your shooter sitting? Perhaps in a blind, close to uh, the fall when you're setting up your shoot, and uh, most of your guests are deer hunters, uh, put out some extra deer targets. Uh, uh, put out uh, the, the animals that they're going to hunt. Uh, uh, it's great to, to mix it up and put some, some different stuff that maybe isn't available to hunt in, in, in your location, but... Um, as it gets close to hunting season, uh, you may want to think about putting out more 
deer and bear if that's what the, what you, what the your guests are shooting um, and if it's springtime uh, maybe put out some some turkey targets or whatever I'm not saying a whole course of them but uh, you could put out some extra turkey targets um, so the guys can get ready for this, the upcoming season if your uh, inventory of targets allows you to do this sometimes it's, it's nice to have multiple targets at a, at a spot and I'm not saying every one of those targets that you set up has to be a shootable target you only need one that is a shootable target and the rest um, are, are there for ambiance or whatever you want to call it uh, so you might want to put uh, you know a, a couple of deer together one one that's the target one that you're shooting at and one that's you know off in the brush at a, at, a, at an angle or whatever um, it, it makes it a little more realistic and uh, it, it separates your shoot from others who maybe uh, aren't putting as much effort into it. Another uh, idea that you can try, it's a lot of fun doing, especially if you have creative people uh, in your organization, is um, different scenarios for different uh, targets. Uh, let me give you an example. I was at a shoot and um, there was a mountain lion up in a uh, elevated up in a, in a tree and at the base of the tree were um, plywood cutouts of uh, dogs that had that had treed that mountain lion um, and uh, they were at the base and everything and when you walked up to that that target it, it looked good it looked really cool you know I mean your target was that mountain lion but at the base of the tree the deers or the uh, dogs got it treed and um, it, it's fun you know I mean it's fun uh, and the other thing that I've seen done and done very well in some cases is um, whole courses that have a theme to it uh, whether it be um, for example a, uh, a Fred Bear course a Fred Bear course where um, each target scenario on that course uh, represents one of uh, Fred Bear's hunts uh, and um, I've seen it where the, where the I mean the details are are a, almost exact to the stuff that Fred uh, wrote about in, in his book and um, right down to the yardage and everything uh, you can you could add um, little uh, information you know uh, Posted there that uh, you know such and such happened in whatever year and and uh, it was a 22 yard shot and uh, whatever um, you can also uh, use that same idea and, and add different trivia to your course uh, it doesn't cost you anything just a little little uh, extra fun thing where where as a shooter goes through um, maybe he learns a little bit learns a little bit about uh, the target animal, you know, uh, habitat or um, whatever. Uh, so a lot of these little details, a lot of these little details are going to separate your shoot from others. And um, once there's a little bit of a reputation and once uh, people get talking about your shoot, uh, uh, your attendance may, may grow and uh, your reputation as, a, as an organization uh, should grow also. Um, now, uh, I know a lot of 3D targets are very expensive and a lot of places can't afford to have you know, all these targets. Um, I've seen extremely creative courses made up of hand-painted targets on cardboard. Um, Again, it, it, you got to have some some imaginative people, some creative people. Sometimes it, it helps if you get the group of guys that are going to be setting up the course to get together. Um, 
before beforehand and start you know hashing out ideas and different uh, uh, thoughts and as they're talking you know they come up with all kinds of all kinds of ideas um, homemade uh, uh, foam targets is another idea another way of uh, adding a, a little extra extra spice to your very important um, you do not want to conflict with other clubs or events in the in the area you want to try to find your little your little niche and your uh, and that little window there that you can do your shoot so that uh, you're the exclusive only game in town that that day um, so so you gotta you gotta communicate with other organizations and and uh, you know maybe get together and, and say hey uh, when, when are you gonna have your shoots uh, this year well we got one this date that date okay well we won't run any of our stuff on those days we were planning on having something on this date does that conflict with anything no well that that's great that's a win-win for for both clubs both organizations also uh, which if you support other organizations shoots and and uh, events and stuff uh, they may come and support yours you know one hand washes the other so uh, you want to timing of shoots timing of shoots is extremely important um, advertising I can't say enough I said it in a previous video about uh, getting the word out on your shoots uh, if you're just starting it's gonna take a little time uh, to get the word out but uh, stick with it and, and keep uh, you know keep sending out them flyers putting things on the internet Maybe start up a database, a mailing database where you can mail out a postcard or something like that. So, um, advertising, the, the timing of your event. Um, and the other thing uh, and, that I want to bring up is if you're going to run a shoot and you want it to be as good a shoot as you possibly can, then don't... Um, overestimate your ability okay <laughs> let me explain that don't uh, try to run an event that you do not have enough uh, people enough targets enough you know whatever to do know your limitations and be the best at what you can but don't try to be you know don't try to be something that you that you're not at that level right now you're, you're just starting out you know you got uh, five guys and so put together a shoot that five guys can put together well don't put try to put together a shoot that uh, needs a hundred and five uh, guys to put it together now uh, none of what I what I discussed here is uh, rocket science by any means uh, it's all pretty simple concepts I, uh, I hope this video helps out uh, uh, some new guys that are getting involved in putting on events and shoots uh, make their event the best that they possibly can um, remember that this doesn't just automatically happen there's a lot of hard work that goes into it a lot of dedication into putting together a good shoot but uh, when you do achieve that when you do put on an outstanding shoot um, it's something to be proud of and uh, eventually your organization's shoots will grow and um, good luck everybody with their uh, with their journey and setting up courses and putting on shoots for the public.